Today I will talk you step by step through three really easy watercolour paintings that you can do if you are beginning your watercolour journey or if you just want to do something quick and fun, maybe after work or at the weekend. This is a really interesting selection of paintings that you can do in a really easy fun way. If you want to find out more about things that you can do or tips for watercolour, say for example equipment, um, or choosing the right equipment or choosing the right paper or choosing the right paints there is a list of tutorials and reviews in the description below I've also listed in the description below all of the resources that I've used in the tutorial today so let's get on with the tutorial so as you can see here I have started by sectioning off the paper I did measure it first to make sure it was as precise as possible and I've add, added washi tape which I have found doesn't rip the paper. You can see swatches of all the colours on the right hand side. For this particular painting I am using two different palettes but you can take these from one palette. If I was going to choose to take them from one palette I would take them from the Winsor & Newton. For this one I'm also using the pastel confections because I want to go for a pastel feel but if you wanted to use just one palette you would be able to just water them down and that would work perfectly well. I've started with using the yellow colour bumblebee in the middle, using a mix of rose and crimson for the outer edge and then for the blue areas I'm using a light wash of cerulean blue and what I'm doing is I'm putting a darker tone on the edge and then putting a gradient of that gradually downwards with my brush and blending that in and then just blending it down with the brush going downwards. I'm using a size 8 silver black velvet brush which is a brush that I use quite frequently in my paint brushing. I do have a clip that I have made on brushes for beginners so that is something that you may want to check out if you are not sure about brushes that you would like to use in your watercolour work. I'm now moving on to the ocean scene and this is using just three different shades of blue. I wanted to keep it quite simple. And again, I am going to put a wash of clean water onto the page. And then I'm going to add a mixture of cerulean blue and cobalt blue. I haven't mentioned that I am using 350 GSM Arches watercolour paper, cold pressed. And I would suggest that for your work, especially if you are starting out, that you should try and use watercolour paper at least 300 GSM for the simple reason that it is it will absorb the water and we're doing, going to be doing wet on wet technique for this. So I would suggest that you get a good quality um, watercolour paper. I do also have a clip on watercolour paper, so you might want to check that out. I'll put a card above so that you can see that. So in this one, I'm on the top half, I'm putting my mixture of cerulean blue and cobalt blue. I am then going to start to put layers of Prussian blue and I'm putting a light wash to begin with and I'm trying to get it gradually darker going downwards. And then what I'm doing is I've moved to a finer brush, so I've moved to a size four brush and I'm then putting thin lines going across. I will then, towards the end, Again, put these darker towards the front because that obviously gives the illusion of depth and perspective. So when you are adding these, make sure that you add them so that they're going down darker towards the front. Now to give this soft feel, I am adding these lines as quickly as possible because it gives this softer effect of the ocean waves. So now that the first layer of the first painting is completely dry and you must make sure it's completely dry because otherwise what will happen is the edges will expand and you don't want that, you want to have a nice crisp edge with what we call wet on dry technique. I'm going to put down a layer of washi tape so I get a nice crisp edge because I'm going to paint a landscape scene. And 
I'm going to start by mixing up some ivory black and I'm going to add a minimal amount of water because I want this to come out quite dark. I want it to be quite a dramatic skyline. And I will go back and add more paint in because I don't want to have those areas, those lighter areas coming through. I want it to be quite a dramatic um, skyline now. I would suggest that you wait for this to dry. I've taken off when it's wet because I'm quite impatient, but you could, you should really, until you're experienced, leave it to dry. Um, so after that has dried, what you could do then is you start painting on your reeds. Now I have used a nail brush for this, but it's up to you. What you can do is um, you could use fine liner pen. It's really up to you. I would suggest you wait until you've got the confidence to paint um, with a nail brush. These nail brushes are really inexpensive and I will put a link in the descriptions below. I prefer to use these to the more expensive zero brushes. I just think that because they don't really last that long because there aren't that many hairs in them, I just think you're better off spending less money and getting a nail brush. So I will put a link in the description below. And then I'm just going to paint on some plants, some uh, riverside plants here. And um, then after that, I will paint in some reflections in the water um, in the background uh, by the scenery at the back. last painting is a very straightforward way of creating any image whether it's a portrait or a landscape today we're doing a landscape I do have a clip on painting a monotone or one color portrait it's in the in the card above if you wanted to explore that and that clip also goes more into more detail about breaking down your values or tones so um, unfortunately my camera switched off when I did the first um, mountain um, but it's just like this second mountain that I'm going to paint in here. Um, I did a light wash, adding a tiny amount of the sepia brown. You could add any colour, it doesn't have to be brown. I've got a clip again in the card above where I've done a landscape and I've done that in purple. But you could do any colour that you like. Um, and I've done the first layer with a really tiny amount of the sepia added into the water. And then I did the next layer, added a tiny amount more. more. Really, I should have painted that all the way to the bottom, but I didn't. And then I'm going to add another tiny amount of the paint just to bring the tone up a little bit more. Obviously, I let it dry in between. And with this next layer, because I'd finished the other two um, paintings, I wanted to carry on and get it finished so I actually used a hairdryer and if you are at a stage with a painting where you're adding layers um, you can use a hairdryer that is a really good tip what I would suggest you do though is just make sure that you don't have any loose pieces of paper lying around and also one mistake I've made in the past is that I had droplets of water on the washi tape and because that takes a long time to dry because the washi tape is purple, um, purple waterproof, um, it doesn't dry. So sometimes when you are um, using the hairdryer, what happens is it will blow onto the painting. So please be mindful of that if you are using a hairdryer. Just make sure that the whole area on the washi tape is completely dry, otherwise it will blow onto your work. So I'm now painting all the way to the bottom, making it as smooth as possible, going back over it to try and smooth all of those areas out with my large size eight brush. And then I am going to, as I said, go in with the hairdryer because I want to get straight into the next 
third layer and I have added a further um, amount of sepia brown to this because I want to get darker with each of those mountain ranges because I'm giving the impression of perspective and all of those areas getting darker as they move towards the foreground so we're using background midground and foreground as and as things move towards the background they get lighter and that's the whole impression that we are creating in this painting So now I'm going to add the darkest layer. I pretty much am adding the water direct to the pan and adding pure sepia tone. And I actually, in areas, I'm going back and adding more of that sepia tone because you can see a little bit of the lighter edge coming through. I want to create the illusion of this being the darkest area possible. And I am giving the impression of these trees being in the foreground and I want it to be as dark as possible so that you can see those planes getting darker towards the foreground. I'm also changing my brush to a flat brush and again details are in the description below because I want to now paint these birds and I'm having I'm creating again a random feel to the birds some with their wings going up some with them coming down um, so that I'm giving that illusion of them flying away into the distance. If you enjoyed this clip, then make sure you check out more clips like this in the watercolour playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of more clips that you can find that will help you on your watercolour journey, as well as all the resources that have been used in today's clip. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Also, you can now check out my Patreon for exclusive content, including real-time content and more. Mm -hmm.